welcome back to our state machine series. So far, our menu looks great, but it doesn't really do anything yet. In this video, we'll continue building a state machine by adding inputs and transitions to bring the menu to life. In the last video, we broke down our animation into smaller segments and set up states. And now it's time to see how we can make it respond exactly the way we want. Let's begin with inputs. So what are inputs? Inputs are the main drivers of a state machine that move it forward. Think of them as switches, signals, or dials that we feed into the state machine. They help us decide when to change from one state to another. Without inputs, our animation would just sit there, static, with no way to react. To set up an input, click on the plus icon in the inputs panel. From here, you can choose from four different types of inputs. Boolean, for simple either slash or actions like toggles. Event, for something that just fires instantly. Numeric, when you want to use numbers to drive your states. String, when you want to use labels or words. There is no single correct way to build a state machine. We can achieve the same result with different input types. It depends on our comfort level and what we're trying to achieve. Let's create our first input. Since our radial menu opens and closes, that's an either or situation, which works perfectly for a Boolean. So I'll create a Boolean input and call it open. By default, the menu should remain closed, so the switch is set to off. Now let's create a few more Booleans. This time for the hover states of each icon in the menu. Palette, Parent, Object Selection, Animation, Brush, and Ruler. All of these are set to off by default. The logic here is the same too. When we hover, the segment plays, and when we hover out, it stops playing. We can see that when we toggle these buttons on and off, nothing really happens. Nothing changes. That's because we haven't actually connected our inputs to our state machine yet. So to actually see inputs in action, we need to create transitions. Transitions are what carry us from one state to another, and this helps us connect different states based on the input conditions. In the previous video, when we created our states, I mentioned that the global state would be the best for this setup since we have too many states and multiple possibilities. This global state is also marked as our initial state. To begin, let's connect our global state to our idle state. We want our state machine to start up from idle, since the menu should begin in a resting state where nothing happens. From there, I'll connect the global state to menu open. Note that any state we add will be connected to the global state. You'll notice that even after connecting the menu open state and playing our state machine, the menu directly opens up and switching the to toggle on and off has no effect. That's because the state machine needs instructions for when it should move. This is the main role of transitions. Think of them like guards at a doorway. They check whether everything's in place before letting us through. Right now, there's no condition specified, so the menu open segment plays as soon as we play the state machine. To fix that, let's define a condition that says move to menu open only when open equals true. Let's define a condition for the idle state too. Here, let's add open equals false. Let's test that out. Super, the menu opens just as expected. That works. But here's a catch. When we open the menu, the animation plays smoothly. But when we close it, it jumps straight back to idle without playing the closing animation. That's not what we want. We want the menu to close with the same smooth animation. There are many ways to tackle this, but since we already have a menu close segment, let's use that. Let's link up the menu close state. And this time, let's add the condition move here only when open equals false. Let's test that again. Toggle on, menu open smoothly. Toggle off, menu closes smoothly. Perfect. But now there's a new issue. When the state machine starts up, it begins with the menu close segment instead of idle. So we'll need to add one more condition. To set that up, we need one more input. This time, let's set up an event instead of a boolean, so the open and close segments can be triggered even when the event is fired too. I'll call this click. Notice how the event icon looks different from the boolean input icons. Now, back to defining our transitions with our new input in place. Click on the menu open transition and hit add condition. Now select the click input. Let's repeat the same for our menu close transition as well. Perfect, that's fixed. Now when we run our state machine, it stays idle until we toggle the open switch and fire the event. But there's still one little issue when we close the menu. It jumps straight back to idle instead of playing the menu close segment. Let's define a few more conditions. But for that, we need to create another boolean input for close. 
This time, let's keep the default switch on, since the menu will be closed when we begin our state machine. Let's add another condition for the idle state. Close equals true. But the problem still persists. If you look at the input switches here, even after toggling the open switch, the closed switch still remains on, and vice versa. We need to set up actions so that when one switch is turned on, the other turns itself off. This is where we can make use of our actions in the state controls. Open the menu open state, and in the on complete actions, select the set input value option. Choose the close input and set it to false. This will automatically turn the close switch off when open is turned on. Repeat the same for the menu close state, but here, set the close value to true. Now, when we toggle the open input on and off while firing the event, it works perfectly. Now let's extend this logic to other parts of the menu, starting with palette hover. Connect the state, then set the condition. Only when palette hover equals true. But as we can see, this can be triggered even when the menu is closed, which shouldn't happen. So, we need to specify another condition. We'll instruct the state machine to play the state only if palette hover equals true and open equals true. This ensures the palette hover works only when the menu is open. Let's test it out. If the menu is closed and palette hover is turned on, nothing happens. Good. And when we open the menu and trigger the hover, it works. Great. However, notice that when we turn the palette hover off, the icon still stays blue. To fix this, let's add another state where the menu is open but idle. We can't use the existing menu open state here because it consists of the entire animation where the menu starts closed and unfolds. For this one, we want it to return to a state where the menu is open but without any animation. To do this, let's go back to the animate tab and create a menu open idle segment. I'm just marking a single frame because that's all we need. Once the segment is created, navigate back to state machines and drag the segment to create a state. Now connect this and add the conditions open equals true and close equals false. Plus another condition that specifies palette hover equals false. Let's test this out. Yay, it works! Let's repeat the same process for all the other tools. Now when we preview it again, everything works just as expected. For this one, we worked entirely with Boolean inputs and one event input. But let's see how the same result is possible with other inputs like string and numeric. Let's experiment with the string input. We can retain our open and close booleans along with the click event input, but add two more events for hover in and hover out. Let's create one more input for string and name it tool name. Leave the default value as blank and hit save. This method of using the string input is slightly simpler because we don't have to create inputs for each and every tool and hover action. Now when we connect our transitions, I'm going to leave my idle, open, and close states as they are because nothing changes there. But while connecting the hover states, things get interesting. Let's take the palette hover as an example. Connect the palette hover to the initial state. And in the transitions panel, retain the condition open equals true. But we need to add two more conditions. One to trigger the hover action and the other to trigger the string input. So let's add hover in and tool name. Under the tool name input, specify a label. In this case, let's call it palette. Lastly, add the hover out condition in the menu open idle transition. To test this out, open up the menu, type palette in the tool name input, and fire the hover in event. Super! We can repeat the same for the rest of the hover segments too. Just remember to change the tool name string label each time. And it works exactly like before. This same result can be achieved with a numeric input as well. To do that, we need to use tool numbers instead of tool labels. For example, each tool can be assigned a number from 1 to 6. We can also apply string and numeric inputs to the menu open and menu close segments too. 
A state machine can be built in different ways using various inputs to reach the same result. The key is to go with whatever works best for your use case. The right choice often depends on the scalability and how many inputs you'll need overall. For example, in this case, we used six inputs in total. And in the Boolean method, we had to use nine. This difference could be even greater if we had more icons in our menu. This makes the string input more favorable. Finally, let's end this video here and take a well-deserved break before we move to our last step. Do try this out and let us know if you have any questions in the comments. You can find the remix link below and more resources on Lottie Creator and State Machines in the description. In the next video, we'll hook this up to real user interactions like click and hover so we don't have to fire multiple inputs for one action to complete. We'll also learn how to export and share our State Machine with our developer. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.